Words of solidarity and support are wonderful and needed, but actions are better. This is a time of struggle and change for many communities, and even though this is a tech noodling YouTube channel, tech is not neutral, and this channel will never be neutral either. Links and resources for organizations working towards social justice and how you can actively participate will be in the description. I've always thought it'd be interesting to build a solder fume extractor using a computer case fan. Uh, there's a ton of designs out there, but I always still wanted to like design and build my own. Sometimes you just feel that way. And sometimes you decide for no discernible reason at all that the time is right. And I decided this year was the year that I was gonna build the solder fume extractor. And as I entered the rumination period of the project, I thought, you know, this should be overly complicated. It should be a smart fan. It could have PWM that adjusts based on the fume levels. Suddenly I was looking into air quality sensors and PWM fan controllers, and shouldn't it have a screen to show me all the data it's logging? But then Adafruit released the Funhouse board, which had a lot of the features I was looking for just built into one package. Uh, and it was with that that I thought, yeah, this should also connect to the internet and log the fumes. I normally don't even like IoT projects. I don't even really own IoT products. Uh, if I'm gonna connect something to the internet, I really would prefer to use an ethernet plug. And it goes without saying that I've never spoken to Siri on my phone, uh, but there's something about an IoT solder fume extractor that's just so ridiculous <laughs> that it really spoke to me. Uh, sometimes projects are just like that. And so began the testing. I went with an SGP30 sensor uh, because it does ECO2 and TVOC uh, for the types of data it can log. Uh, I held some solder fumes up to it and sure enough, it reacted. It was showing the different levels on the screen of the Funhouse. So basically, proof of concept achieved. This became a collaboration with Nay Ruiz from Adafruit. He built an enclosure for the 140 millimeter Noctua fan. Noctua fans, if you're into computer stuff, are known for being super quiet because who wants a loud fume extractor? And I feel like having a Noctua fan just adds to the complicated nature of this project. It just makes it totally off the rails. This particular fan is also five volts and PWM, so it checks all the boxes. The enclosure also has mounts for the sensors and the funhouse board. I printed mine in pink and yellow, which is one of my favorite color combinations because it's really obnoxious, borderline ugly, but still kind of matches. Like you can, you can just get away with it. So I assembled mine and based on, you know, the proof of concept testing that I'd done and also the further testing of the code with my exhaled CO2, I kind of thought testing it was more of a formality. So I decided to solder up Oscatone's Atari Punk console though, as a test. Cause what a great excuse to solder up a fun, noisy toy. However, as I soldered away, no fumes were reaching the sensor. So the fan speed wasn't reacting with the fume level. Uh, it's because the fan was pulling the fumes away towards the path of least resistance. So it was just totally missing the sensor. All of the project's complications were being wasted. It was just a functional fume extractor. And, and who wants that? Literally everyone else but me. However, the Atari Punk console worked as expected. It makes fantastic bleepy, bloopy, crunchy, gritty noise. Tommy makes great synths and synth adjacent creations. Now I had the same problems with the fumes uh, when he tested. So I tried adjusting some stuff in code. What if we shrunk the range so that stuff was more sensitive? What if we were logging um, TVOC instead of EC ECO2? Uh, but it became really apparent that uh, it was a physical problem. We needed to somehow help the fans get to the sensor. I sent this drawing to Nay to literally illustrate our texted brainstorms and he designed up an adjustment. Uh, basically a little fan was going to sit in front of the SGP30 to pull some of the fumes directly towards the sensor. It's hard to not feel like a scavenger when building projects like this bringing seemingly unrelated objects together to create something functional. I can already hear you though. Wouldn't the fan have been fine without all of this extra stuff? Yes, of course, uh, that's proven in the first version. It was extracting fumes, which really in the long run is the only feature that matters. 
but sometimes you've got to make stuff complicated for the fun, the challenge, and in this case, a little bit for the irony. The fan has a startup menu where you choose whether to send your fumes to the cloud or stay off the grid. Either way, the screen will show you the air quality and the fan's RPM, which adjusts based on the fume levels. You can also change your internet connected status by pressing the top button. So you can either connect or disconnect like any time while the fan's going. If I'm gonna use an IoT device, I'm gonna need options. After the modification of the sensor fan, it was time for another real world test. This time, Boldport's Spultz uh, kit. It's a 3D uh, PCB art kit that builds into a solder spool holder. The soldering resembles more of a welding job as you have to like really drag the solder across the joints to make stuff connect. Uh, and this was a lot harder than I thought it'd be. Uh, that combined with the fact that the fan wasn't reacting as much to the fumes as I thought, I was getting very frustrated. Eventually I stopped fussing over the fumes and just focused on the soldering. And once I chilled out a bit, then I also got the hang of making those kind of solder joints and it started going a lot easier. At one point I looked up at the Funhouse's screen and saw that the fumes were definitely being detected and everything was falling into place. This was the data that was collected during the soldering session. I think this is a great use of a line graph. It's really begging to be inserted into a PowerPoint. Now, and I wrote a learn guide for this project so you can build your own if you want. And I left the code in a state so that the SGP30's data the way it's being collected can be totally customized depending on how your fumes are getting to it, the kind of data you want to see, etc. cetera. Uh, and also it's totally optional to connect to the internet. You don't have to do that. Uh, but if you do, you get to say you have an IoT solder fume extractor. And that is the story of the overly complicated solder fume extractor. It was a journey that was definitely at times complicated, but it all ended up working out with a lot of collaboration and testing, lots and lots of testing. So many fumes. Thank you for watching, and until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.